The Windwalker from Golden Field. Is it an ARGB masterpiece or a massive train wreck? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. What I've got here is the Windwalker F06 from Goldenfield. I did pick this up off of Amazon. Now Goldenfield does have an English website, but it looks like their CPU cooler list hasn't been updated since I guess the mid 2000s. So it seems the best place to view their current products is on their Amazon store page. There are two variants of this cooler, the Windwalker F04 and the Windwalker F06. The F04 has four heat pipes and the F06 has six heat pipes. At least it makes sense. Now at the time of filming, prices are quite inflated. The Amazon.com store has the F04 for 49 US dollars and the F06 for 51 US dollars. But I did buy this for 39 Canadian back in July. So the current state of affairs in the world does have the prices quite inflated. Okay, let's see what comes in the box. There is a manual, a small tube of thermal compound, mounting bars for Intel mainstream, mounting bars for Intel 2011, which is very old, so I don't know why you still have 2011 mounting bars. There is a backplate. This backplate is for both AMD and Intel sockets, and mounting bars for AMD. There is an ARGB adapter, so you can control the LEDs. Moving on to the heatsink and fans, it comes in a loosely packed foam box thing. Now the unit I bought did come damaged, likely because of this packaging. Now I did end up just repairing it myself with some epoxy. There are six continuous direct contact heat pipes, which is nice to see. These heat pipes are six millimeter heat pipes. And as you can see, these fans are not standard fans. I'm not exactly sure how to describe them. The fans themselves do clip onto the heatsink with the rear fan having its blades being reversed or inverted. So this is a push-pull configuration. Now the box does indicate that these fans do have a rating between 800 and 2200 RPM. And I will confirm this later on in the video. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of extra cables. These cables are to power the ARGB LEDs, but they do make removing and putting on the fans far more annoying. Looking at the heatsink, the black looks well coated. I don't see any missing spots. I'll show some B-roll of the heatsink so you can have a better look. Now the dimensions of the cooler with the fans attached is 158 millimeters high by 142 millimeters wide by 102 millimeters deep. Now based off these dimensions, I don't think you should have any RAM clearance issues, but if you do have your GPU in your top PCIe slot and your GPU has a backplate, you might end up running into some clearance issues between this cooler and your GPU. Now, I really don't like this monoform thing they have going here for the fans, because if one of these fans go, you're likely gonna be SOL. SOL means shit out of luck. And what I mean by that is the fans can't be easily replaced. Goldenfield does have a customer service email, but what you're supposed to do in the meantime, I'm not too sure. Now, I did check, and the little metal clips that come with other CPU coolers do work with this heatsink, but Goldenfield doesn't provide them. So if one of the fans do stop working, you'll need your own metal clips, or again, you're gonna be SOL, because I don't think this cooler can run with just one fan. Okay, the Windwalker is compatible with Intel's LGA 2011 socket. Again, this is a very old socket, so I don't know how many people are still using this socket, but it is also compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets. For AMD compatibility, this cooler is compatible with pretty much all mainstream AMD sockets. Okay, how to install this cooler? I will be demonstrating on an AM4 motherboard. Now, as always, before you start, make sure you have a flat and sturdy surface. You should have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can use the box that your motherboard came in. You will also need a Phillips 2 screwdriver. Now, the installation between Intel and AMD should be pretty similar. The main difference being the mounting bars and which holes the standoffs go through on the backplate. Okay, to start, we'll need the backplate, the standoffs, and the plastic clips that go with your socket. Putting the standoffs through the holes that correspond with your socket. Once the standoffs are in, use the plastic clips to lock the standoffs in place. 
With the back plate fully assembled, tilt the motherboard up and align the back plate with the holes on the motherboard. Then lay the motherboard flat and move it to the side. First, we need to remove the fans from the heatsink. It's time to fasten the mounting bars to the coal plate. For AMD, the mounting bar should be facing in. Once all four screws are tight, you can remove the sticker from the bottom of the coal plate. Now clean off your CPU with some isopropylene alcohol. Once the CPU is clean, apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Place the heatsink coal plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screws on the mounting bars to the standoffs. Making sure all four screws are threaded into the standoffs before tightening them too much. It's also best to tighten the screws in a cross diagonal pattern. You can now reinstall the fans onto the heatsink. This can be problematic because of the RGB cables. Once both fans are plugged in, plug the PWM connector to the CPU fan header on your motherboard and we're done the installation. Now before moving on to the temperature testing, I wanted to go over the fans PWM range and the ARGB LEDs quickly. So with the fans at 100% PWM, the RPM of the front fan is 2290 and the cooler itself has a DBA of 46.3. Now that is taken from 20 inches away in an open air test bench, but yes, that is very loud. Then dropping the PWM all the way down, the RPM was 1135 with a DBA of 32.4. Now the noise floor of my room is 32 DBA, so it's just above that. Okay, moving on to the LEDs. These are 5 volt ARGB LEDs, so they are not compatible with the 12 volt LEDs. Now its default is this rainbow cycle. So if you don't or can't plug it in, it will stay on this rainbow cycle. But you can plug it into your motherboard or an ARGB 5 volt hub to control the LEDs. On to the temperature testing. If you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll put a card above and I'll also link it in the description. So the Windwalker F06 in the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test had a temperature of 78.1 C, which has it at the bottom of the chart. When letting the fans run at full speed, the average CPU was 74.8 C, which has the Windwalker pretty much the same temperature as the Evo, but the Evo was at only 40.5 dBA, so there's a pretty large noise difference for no real temperature difference. For the 150 watt testing, the Windwalker performed better than I thought it would. In the noise equalized test, the average CPU temperature was 89.2 C, which does have it second from the bottom of the list only because the Evo actually failed this test. Then at full speed, the Windwalker had an average CPU temperature of 82.8 C. Now it did manage to edge out the 34 eSports, but with twice the perceived loudness. So what do I think of Golden Fields Windwalker F06? Well, this is a bit of a tough one. I think the build quality of the heatsink is pretty good. There's six six millimeter heat pipes. That's a lot of thermal mass there, but the monoform fan shroud thing is an effing joke. I understand you get the ARGB LEDs, but there's other coolers that give you a similar look, but those coolers use fans that can be replaced. With this cooler, if a fan dies, it's pretty much 960 grams of e-waste. I can't stress how bad the fan design is. It's horrible, like it, it's absolutely atrocious. Now, if the fans die, it might be possible to get a response from Goldenfield. They do have that customer service email. Now, if it's being monitored or not, I have no idea because if the support page on their website is anything to go by, I don't think anyone's home. Now, I haven't even gotten to the fact that these fans are the loudest fans I've tested by far. And combining that with the temperatures that you're getting, there's no way I can recommend this cooler. Now you might be thinking if I can find this cooler for 20 or 25 USD and I have my own fans and my own metal clips, I can just kind of clip that. I, I still wouldn't recommend it. Just don't do it. Because by that point, you'd likely be better off getting a better cooler like the 34 eSports from Arctic. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter 
at hfg underscore yt. There's also an HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. The link is in the description below. Maybe check out these videos here. They should be pretty much along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.